I'm sure most of you guys are aware that Kanye and Drake are not on the best terms. After the whole certified lover boy versus Donda thing, I'm pretty sure everyone is aware of their beef. So today, I'm gonna be going over the history of Kanye and Drake's beef, starting all the way from their first interactions to now. Before we get started, make sure to drop a like because this took a while to make, and consider subscribing if you're new here if you want to see more hip hop content. Also, big shout out to this NME article. I got most of my info from that, so I'll put the link to it in the description. Drake used a sample from the song Say You Will off 808s and Heartbreak on one of his mixtapes So Far Gone but it wasn't until later that year in May where Kanye recognized him. Kanye gave a shout out to Drake for his bar on Every Girl where he said, Do you like girls like I do? Let's be honest. To which Kanye said, Best line of the year so far. Drake returned the favor in another interview saying, Before I ever got the chance to meet him, Kanye West shaped a lot of what I do as far as music goes. Acknowledging the influence Kanye has had in his music. Fast forward a year to April 2010 and the two are still on good terms. Thank Me Later dropped which contained the hit song Find Your Love which Kanye actually co-produced and wrote with Drake. People actually think this beat was supposed to be used on 808s and Heartbreaks and was just a throwaway that Kanye gave to Drake. Kanye also asked Drake to write a verse so that he could feature on all the lights. But unfortunately, them being on good terms did not last as Drake was spotted with Amber Rose, who Kanye was in a relationship with only two months prior. November 2010 rolls along and My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy drops. For some reason, Drake's feature on all the lights was completely scrapped without Drake even knowing. But in an interview, Drake said that he was completely fine with his verse being removed. But I don't think he really was. Two months later, were in January of 2011. Kanye West and Jay-Z had already announced that they were working on a collab album called Watch the Throne, and Drake responded to this while speaking to Tim Westwood, saying, I heard some other guys are coming out with an album too. There's two other rappers that are coming out with an album together. I don't know where they got that idea. He was obviously referencing Watch the Throne, and he was gonna come out with a collab album with Wayne. Now, I know what you're thinking. That wasn't too big of a shot at Kanye. It was sort of just friendly competition. But later that year, Drake said this, My goal is to surpass everything he's accomplished. I don't want to be as good as Kanye. I want to be better. And later that year, again, he took another shot on a DJ Khaled song saying, I'm just feeling like the throne is for the taking, watch me take it. Referencing Watch the Throne again. Fast forward to August 2013 and these guys just acted like nothing happened. Drake had an OVO fest which Kanye had a surprise appearance at and he said this on stage. Me and Hove would have never made Watch the Throne if Drake wasn't putting pressure on us like that, so I just want to pay my respects. So it seemed like they were on good terms again. But were they really? Because less than a year later in February 2014, Drake gets back to firing shots shots at Kanye. In an interview with Rolling Stone, Drake started making fun of Kanye for some of the bars on I'm In It off his album Yeezus, saying, there were some real questionable bars on there, like that Spike Healy line? Come on, man, even Fabulous wouldn't say some shit like that. But when the interview was finally published, Drake denied ever dissing I'm In It, and somehow Kanye believed him, saying Rolling Stone was always trying to pit beep against each other. Kanye went on to say, we love Drake, we love every motherfucker that put their heart into this motherfucking music. So in the end, no one knows if Drake really said this. Personally, I do think Drake said this just in the moment and then regretted it later so denied it. I don't think Rolling Stone would just make something up like that. That's really bad for their reputation. But let me know what you guys think in the comments. So since Kanye believed that Drake never said this about him, they are on good terms for a year. On such good terms that fast forward to February 2015, Kanye was on The Breakfast Club and hinted at a collab album with Drake. But just as their situation started to get better, Drake decided to throw some more shots at Kanye. Fast forward another year to January 2016, there's no word on their collab album but Drake decides to release a single called summer 16 where he said this. Now I got a house in LA, now I got a bigger pool than Ye, and look man, Ye's pool is nice, mine's just bigger what I'm saying. Kanye responded by saying this. Is Drake's pool really bigger than yours, Kanye? <laughs> <laughs> I have three pools. Thank you, Kanye. This just started their beef all over again. Kanye removed Drake's feature from Wolves off the life of Pablo, and Drake removed Jay-Z and Kanye's feature on Pop Style off Views. But then the same month, Drake calls Kanye one of my favorite people. I'm so lost. Kanye appears at his third OVO event, and they tease the collab album once again. Also, a billboard featuring both the OVO and Good Music logo starts appearing in LA. Things were looking amazing, this collab album was finally gonna drop, and their beef was over, but Kanye was still holding a little bit of a grudge from that DJ Khaled song. On the St. Pablo tour, Kanye mentions the DJ Khaled song that Drake dissed Kanye in again, saying Khaled set it up with radio stations to play it more. I went from being like working on a project with him to him sort of publicly shitting on me and DJ Khaled for being on the radio too much. I'm not sure why we're the target of the choice you made that night. And yeah, I accept what you're going through and I just go and continue working on my own thing. So at this point, it just seemed like Kanye wanted an apology for the small diss that Drake made on that DJ Khaled song, but Drake did not see it as a big deal at all. This took things to a another level. May 2018, the Drake and Pusha T beef starts again. Drake and Pusha have had beef for a while and I could probably make a whole video explaining that, but all you gotta know is that the beef started up again. 
Pusha T releases his album Daytona, which has a song called Infrared. On this song, he just throws a bunch of disses at Drake, saying he has ghostwriters and stuff like that. Less than a day later, Drake comes out with Duppy Freestyle to respond to Pusha T, but for some reason on this song, he doesn't only diss Pusha T, he also throws some shade at Kanye, saying he's written for him before. But just four days later, after Duppy Freestyle, Pusha T comes out with the greatest diss track of all time, the story of Adidon. Pusha T exposed the hell out of Drake on this one. Since Kanye and Drake used to be cool with each other, Kanye had a bunch of inside info on Drake which he gave to Pusha T to use on this diss. Kanye collaborator Malik Youssef implied in an interview that Kanye heard Drake's song March 14th before it was released which is how Kanye knew about Drake's son. On the story of Adidon, Pusha T exposed this hidden son that he had with a porn star and also dissed him for a bunch of other random stuff. If you haven't heard it yet, go listen to it. Kanye denied ever giving any information to Pusha T but I think think it's pretty obvious he did. From this point on, Kanye and Drake would never be on good terms again. When Kanye dropped Ye, he also had a bunch of sneak disses towards Drake, including the line, calm down you light skin. But Drake was still making disses back, saying stuff like, keeping it G, I told her don't wear no 350s around me. Referencing Kanye's Yeezys on an unreleased track with French Montana. Why does Drake collaborate with French Montana? I don't understand. The next day, Kanye tries to make amends, apologizing for not talking to Pusha T about Infrared before releasing it. Infrared was the song on Daytona that started their whole beef up again and Kanye helped work on Daytona so I guess he knew about it beforehand and didn't say anything. But although he denied that, Kanye still denied any claims about him telling Pusha T about Drake's son. So believe what you will I guess, I just don't know how else Pusha T would have found out about that. It's December 2018, the end of the year and Kanye decides to take things to Twitter. Remember when I said Drake sampled Say You Will off 808s and Heartbreaks on his song Say What's Real? Drake wanted to get that sample cleared so he told his manager to reach out to Kanye's manager but then Kanye just posted this on his Twitter. This proves shit faker than wrestling. However, Kanye did not stop there as he went off in a series of tweets telling Drake all the things he has to apologize for, including the 350s line, not taking his mental prom seriously, and buying the first two rows at a Pusha T show. In the end, Kanye tweeted, Drake finally called. This meant that Drake and Kanye were finally on good terms and never had beef again, right? wrong. Kanye tweeted right after saying, by the way, not cleared, and said Drake called him to threaten him but not to apologize. He mentioned since the pool line he's been trying to poke at me and fuck with me. Kanye also got mad at Travis Scott for allowing Drake to sneak diss him on his song Sicko Mode. Kim Kardashian also got thrown in the mix tweeting, never threaten my husband or our family. He paved the way for there to be a Drake. My husband is the most brilliant person, the most genius person that I know. He has broken so many boundaries, everything from music, stage design, fashion, and culture, and will continue to change the world. What a great wife. After that, nothing really happened for a year. Drake and Kanye just went their own separate ways. It was clear we were not getting the collab album anymore, but at least they weren't throwing disses at each other anymore. Fast forward to December 2019, and nothing still happened, but Drake sort of just explains his thought process. He says that he has no intentions in squashing the beef with Pusha T, and it's mostly Kanye's fault that they have beef in the first place. I could never, ever, ever, ever turn my back on the things that I've said to him in a positive light and I still feel all those same things. He's still my, obviously with the exception of Lil Wayne, and if I look at Hove as the guy who truly shaped the majority of my thinking, skill set, all those things, Kanye West would still be my favorite artist all around. And that's just facts. I have no problem saying that. Things have changed. I'm not just some kid that's a fan anymore. Now we have personal situations. And like I said, a lot of his issues with me, I can't fix them for him. Props to Drake for being mature on this one. But only two months ago, the beef was reignited. On Trippy Red song Betrayal, Drake says this. All these fools I'm beefing that I barely know. 45, 44, burned out, let it go. Ye ain't changing shit for me, it's set in stone. That caused Kanye to tweet this screenshot out of a group chat. It shows that he just added Pusha T, then sent a picture of the Joker with this caption. I live for this. I've been fucked with by nerd ass jock people like you my whole life. You will never recover, I promise you. Just days later, Kanye posted Drake's home address on his Instagram before quickly deleting it. To which Drake responded with this video. <laughs> A couple days later, Drake announced the date that he was going to release Certified Loverboy. At this point, Kanye had already delayed Donda a bunch of times, but my theory is that he wanted to drop it on the same day as Certified Loverboy to sell more than him and then sort of win the beef. But his label knew that releasing an album on the same day as the biggest artist in the world would definitely make them less money, so they decided to release the album early without Kanye's knowledge on a Sunday morning. This caused a bunch of other problems. Kanye was pissed, but that doesn't really have much to do with the beef, so I'm not going to get into that. On Certified Loverboy, Drake didn't directly diss Kanye on any songs, but there were definitely a couple sneak disses, such as the line, you know the fourth level of jealousy is called media, isn't that an ironic revelation? 
Give that address to your driver, make it your destination, instead of just a post out of desperation. Referencing Kanye leaking his address. In the end, Certified Loverboy did sell and stream more than Donda, so props to Drake for that. If you know anything about me or have watched any of my reviews, you know that I like Donda a lot more than Certified Loverboy. But I gotta give it to Drake, the dude can pull numbers. But that's everything that's happened up to this point, the rest is in the future. Maybe they'll keep throwing disses at each other, maybe they'll go their own separate ways, or maybe they'll finally make amends for good and drop that collab album. Let me know who you think won the beef or was being more mature throughout the whole beef in the comments. Personally, I think Kanye was being weird in the beginning, just being jealous of Drake's popularity, but then Drake just kept throwing more disses at Kanye after their beef was already settled, just making it into a bigger deal. But yeah, that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next week.